now we know that this is not good enough and uh, we have to take responsibility for it. I have to take responsibility for it. We don't give the performance, so yeah, I feel sorry for the fans. Um, but yeah, what I say, that is below our standards and we have to put it right. The fans, as you talk about, this has been going for about seven or eight years now, and I know that you haven't been responsible for all that time. How do you put it right, though, now? We have to recover from it, but, uh, um, but we have still... Um, uh, we have to do quickly, C quickly recover, and Saturday is the next game. But yeah, we have to, to raise our standards. This is not good enough. Can I ask, do you have the right characters? Do you have enough characters in this group of players to meet those demands, to meet those standards of Manchester United? We have. Uh, I'm, I'm confident in that. Um, players will stand up and they are sticking together. Uh, you, you have seen, they tried, but we know this is not good enough, and as I say, um, I'm responsible uh, for this, and we have to do this together. You are responsible, but they have confidence, they have belief, and when confidence is down, it's quite tricky for that individual person to get it back. I assume that confidence is suffering right now. Yeah, that's logical, but you only get your confidence when first uh, that you want to to play. Uh, first, you get confidence when you uh, get the right results. And it's only possible when you are following the rules, following the principles, be in the game, uh, winning your battles, uh, going to the fight, uh, but especially do it together. Uh, you have to do it as a team. And is that why you say stick together and that's the way you will get through this? That is the only way uh, that you have to stick together, but you have to be disciplined and you have to do it in togetherness, uh, everyone has to take responsibility, be accountable and yeah, cooperate. Uh, that's the key word. And, and just lastly, when you say you're responsible, do you make changes? Do you do something different this weekend against Fulham? Oh, first, uh, we have a night's sleep <laughs> and, uh, and then we will pick the team and the tactics. And most important is, I think, yeah, uh, the mentality where we have to put in. Eric, thank you for your time. You're welcome. Uh, the fans are disbelieve. Well, I wouldn't even say disbelieving, really, because they've seen it all before so many times. Newcastle fans waving them goodbye as several of them left early. A man alone with his thoughts in the technical area there. A few of the fans turned to question him at times during that 90 minutes. The stats are bleak for Eric Ten Hag at the moment. You can take your pick from any of those. Five of the 10 Premier League games this season lost. Eight of the first 15 this season. You've got to go back 60 years for uh, more defeats at this stage of a season. And they have spent a lot of money, have Manchester United. Juliet asked some great questions there. Andy, did you learn anything from the answers? Stick together. And ultimately, that's what you have to do. Uh, difficult situation, as you know, losing Sunday against Manchester City and then losing this evening. Uh, the performance this evening wasn't good. I think he knows that and I think he appreciates that. He's talking about, obviously, he's got to look at himself, but I think the players really need to have a real good look at himself now because once you cross that white line, it's not about the managers, it's about players playing for each other. I said, I said those United fans may be in disbelief, but they have seen it before. And I do wonder, Izzy, whether there are lots of United fans here who are thinking, seen it, can, seen, it, seen, it, seen it towards the end of David Moyes, seen it towards the end of Jose Mourinho, seen it towards the end of Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, seen it virtually the whole time under Ralph Ragnick, not necessarily Van Gaal because he won the FA Cup, of where it looks like there's a massive disconnect between whether there is or not, it looks like there's a disconnect between players and managers. Could say that, yeah. I think from a fan's perspective, the one thing they need to see on that pitch is evidence that there is fight, togetherness, a plan, uh, a willingness to attack, a willingness to defend, because that's what the fans need to see. And if there was genuine signs of that from the players, I think the fans would have a little bit more patience with the the project if, if we want to call it a project but generally speaking I don't think said 
at this at this moment with Manchester. I think actions have to take take the lead, and um, yeah, it's it's really tough to sort of analyse. Um, he said to Juliet that he does have characters. Hmm. When you watch them, do they look like they have characters? No, it, it feels there's a there's a real divide. I think you mentioned it in your question. Actually, there's a divide. It seems between the players, in my opinion, and, and the manager. I think there's a lot of fallout behind the scenes that maybe we don't know about. You know, Varane's missing again tonight. He didn't play in the derby at the weekend. Ill, apparently, tonight. Ill, yeah. Okay. Yeah, Sancho. Sancho's out of the picture. Um, Anthony's had his issues. Um, there just seems, you mentioned at the end of any managerial sort of reign at any club, there's there's always a seem of disbelief. And, and, and yes, their players have to take responsibility because that's your job. As Andy says, when you cross the white line, you're doing it for yourself, you're doing it for your family. But it seems sometimes at the end of someone's tether, the, the players seem to, I don't say down tools, but it seems a bit of a, no cohesion. a disconnection. And, and again, like you know, losing the derby the weekend here, losing the game tonight, you know, the fans, and, and credit to the Man United fans who turned out tonight because there was a huge following tonight. But again, after an hour, it was the game was over and a lot of them went home early. G Gary said it in commentary as well. Do you think some of the players think that they are showing character, whereas Gary said they're being petulant? Well, it depends how you view character. Um, I, I think I know where Nev's coming from because when you're playing successful teams, you know, you've all stand up because your character, your big characters. And I touched but on you it. can stand up in various ways, yeah, can't you? Yeah, you can you do, yeah. You don't just have to go and kick someone. Of, of course, <laughs> but I, I think once, once you cross the white line, I, I, I touched on it, Michel, you your own captain. There's 11 captains out there. I mean, so you're all pushing and pulling in the same direction. I think sometimes I'm, I'm looking at Manchester United player at the moment I think some of the players are playing for themselves. You know, when you lose confidence, yeah, you do hide a little bit. And you're looking at that performance today and obviously the performance on Sunday. You turn around and ask some questions, say, what's actually going on here? That's why everyone keeps asking all these questions because there's no answers coming out at the moment. Five of their next six are away from home. I, w I, wonder, I wonder whether that may help. I mean, their only home game is against Luton. Which will, which will bring a different type of pressure and expectation, actually, for, from the crowd. But the other five are away. Well, if they don't get a result against Fulham and they don't go away to Copenhagen and get a result, that Luton game at home becomes very, very tense. In the graph as well, before you said about the money spent, they spent 400 and whatever was it? 11. 11 million pounds. I mean, you can talk about the previous managers and... You, you, you say you have to give him time, you have to get his own players. That's his team we're looking at now. And they were poor the weekend against Manchester City. He made quite a few changes tonight to try and freshen up to give these guys an opportunity. And they were poor again tonight. And where do they go from here? There's, there's, you know, Gary mentioned when he's walking off the pitch, Ten Hag got a lot of thinking to do himself over the next couple of days. But do the, do the board and the directors at, at Man United have a lot of thinking to do as well? Is it, is it going... Do, you think, they, do well, you think they do? I think they will be. I don't, I don't know. I mean, the fans, you can see some of the reactions when they're turning to the dugout and standing up and, and really, you know, they're hard on the sleeve job. The fans, they, they, it's not good enough. It's not good enough for a club this size. I mean, Andy knows better than me. You know, if they play for Manchester United, you have to stand up and be counted. And it doesn't look like... You know, the players and, and, of course, the manager has to take the, the final sort of flack, isn't it? The, major the majority of fans still feel to be, uh, still feel like they're on his side, though. I, w I would like to believe yeah. so. But if you're looking at those next six fixtures there, you know, Fulham, the weekend, and then Champions League, Copenhagen, they need to win against Copenhagen. They need to win against Fulham. So the next couple of games, if he doesn't get results, next couple of games, as we know, football is it's very up and down and, Attitudes could change in the next couple of games. Would you? I wouldn't say there's sufficient evidence to to say that if they do beat Fulham and they do go away to Copenhagen and they win, I I, I don't see enough evidence to suggest that they're then going to be on the right path. Yeah, you, you well, need you need to it needs yeah. to be but sustained, doesn't it? it? Exactly, yeah. and that's why I'm saying the fans need evidence that there's a plan out there, and it's showing, and the fans can go home and go whatever the result and go. Yeah, I can kind of see the way they're trying to do that. I can kind of see the way they're trying to attack, but. I'm struggling to see at the moment Attack. and I think it's become a little bit predictable, a little bit monotonous and even just switch the wingers over, switch switch Anthony and uh, Rashford over and to see if you can get to the byline and put some crosses in for Hoyland. I don't know, just mix something up a little bit. John, Tino, how good was tonight? Uh, yeah, no, it was, it was a very good night for, for everyone involved. I think, you know, a lot of new players came in to, to the starting eleven, and... Um, and it just shows uh, the unity that we have in the squad. Everyone comes in, has the opportunity and takes it. And um, I think that's, that's what you need if you want to be a top team.
Sean, fully deserved, 150th appearance for you, captain as well. Could it have gone any better? Yeah, it's a special night. Um, but it was just a sort of a, a special night for everyone. Obviously, we had Emil Croft playing his first game in over a year, and I thought he was unbelievable alongside Dummy. And you could probably go through the whole team, Tino, and obviously Lewis Hall. Young lads at full back, I thought were absolutely outstanding. And um, no, an absolutely great night for us. And um, yeah, it just shows the togetherness and the, the depth we've got in the squad. That's just it. Tino was talking about the changes that was made by, by Eddie Howe, but you seem to just settle so well. And once you went ahead, that was it, full control. Yeah, I mean, the manager gives a game plan every weekend. Um, there's a reason he's so good. He makes a lot of a look really good in his system. And um, yeah, it's a pleasure to play from. And, and like I said, we've got really good depth in the squad. And obviously, we've got lads who've trained a lot and um, been waiting for a game. And I've, like I said, I thought everyone was terrific tonight. And obviously, see all the, the way fans as well. It was um, yeah, a really special night for Tino, 8,000 away fans. Yeah, I mean, uh, when I played away, when I was at Southampton, I could tell that the fans were amazing. And now being part of, of Newcastle is just it's a whole nother level. Um, yeah, it's just amazing when you hear them chanting your name. And yeah, it just makes you want to, you know, run that extra yard and, and give, all, give everything that you've got. It's something as well to beat both Manchester clubs with a clean sheet too. Yeah, it's something that, you know, the coaching staff drive into us every day. You know, that's how you win games. That's the foundation that you build on. And like uh, Sean said, everyone that came in, especially the defence, I think showed that, you know, we've got the mentality to never want to concede. And, and that's a big team, uh, big thing for us. The workload has increased. Cup finalists last season, is that belief? Quarterfinals that you can just go that one step further this time around? Yeah, hopefully. Obviously, that's the goal. Um we want to try and get as far as we can in every competition and we obviously fell at the, the sort of final hurdle last year and like I said I think we've got a better squad this year we've got a lot more depth and um, yeah like I said it's something we're obviously targeting we haven't won a trophy in a long time and um, if we can be the group to do it um, yeah that'll be amazing but sort of one game at a time and hopefully we've got a nice draw the next round Well you've got quite a big weekend coming up and then obviously you've got the Champions League as well but that workload it has increased but, but you guys just seem to be enjoying it so much yeah, I mean, obviously, that's uh, down to how well the team done last season and, and now being a part of it, you know, you see uh, coming into training every day how much everyone works and, and gives and, you know, that's what you that's your reward at the end of the day, playing in the uh, big games and lots of competitions and something that, you know, we as a, as a club all look forward to. Through to the quarterfinals, you're also Tino, player of the match. Sean, do you want to do the honours? I know you've been practising, so here we go. <laughs> Cheers, Thank you. Thank you. Sort of watch that and listen to that and that there's in many ways a sort of quiet determination and an expectation that they were they were going to do what they did tonight yeah and you can sense the the togetherness the unity um livermento alluded to that the unity and you, it's also like you can't help but smile listening to those two guys speaking like long stuff obviously the story behind him you know with a geordie a local lad and then livermento coming in as Kieran Trippier's sort of second choice, you know, as a right back. And you're thinking, well, he's learning from one of the best fullbacks in the game at the moment. Um, and, and the fact that he said how enjoyable it is going into training every day, it's mm. a breath of fresh air listening to that. It is. Uh, he was instrumental in the first goal was Livermento. Yeah, I mean, he had a brilliant game again. And, and as he rightly said before, he was man of the match against Man City in the previous round and, and man of the match again. So, you know, Trippier is, a, is a, a great guy to be helping this guy in his career. But yeah, he picked it up and Man United look at it. Maybe they should have put a few tackles and didn't. And he just kept going and kept going. And then it's the perfect way to pass. You know, we spoke about Dallow at half time, but you know, if I'm focused purely on Newcastle, it's brilliant from Livermento and, and, and to take the ball off from that position, you think he's driven what, sixty yards there? Yeah. Without yeah, so, anybody. So if you're Eric Ten Hag, you're thinking, what what are we doing? Like, why is no one tackling? Even pull him back, just try and stop the play. But take one for the team. Take one for the team. But take nothing away from that pass, the weirder pass and, and, and Almiron's touch was brilliant and his and his second touch was even better. But yeah, Livermore was, was was superb in this.